doing John part two. I don't know who's done this to this chord, Benny, but goodness me. Okay. I don't know how that's going to go. Rightio. Um, let's pray before we get kicked off and uh, we'll carry on after that. Let's pray. My Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you for today. My Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to open your word in this place. Uh, my Father, could I just ask that you would lead and guide me? Um, uh, Father, help me to just speak those things that uh, you desire. Help me to edify and glorify you, Lord, uh, up here. Lord, I pray that you'd help me to be an encouragement and edification to your saints that are in this place and, Lord, those that might be listening online this morning. I thank you, Father, for the opportunity and I just pray that um, all that would, all that I do, Lord, and, and all that we do in this place today be done to your glory. So I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Alrighty. So last week we, uh, we did, a, a, I guess, a brief overview, if you like, of the structure of John. And um, we... We learned uh, that the Gospel of John is quite different in content and layout to the, uh, the other three synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke. Uh, we saw that John was an eyewitness account as stated in the book. Um, and we learned that the Gospel of John has the deity of Christ in full view. And we see that from the very beginning of the gospel where Christ is presented as God, uh, where he's present at the beginning of time, he's present with God and he's actually God. So this morning, uh, I'd like to do, a, I guess, a little bit of a walkthrough of the gospel following a certain theme. And uh, I'm not sure if the scholars have a name for what I'm going to do this morning. I have a name for it, but I don't know if it's a scholarly name because I'm not a scholar, of course. So I'm calling it a thematic walkthrough. Don't ask me how I came up with that name, but following a certain theme, I'm calling it a thematic walkthrough. So if there's anyone who's more scholarly than me, and I get to the end of it and you go, oh, no, that was actually a blah, 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 you can come up and put me right, because uh, that's all I know. The theme that I'd like to follow through the book of John this morning is the inadequacy or the insufficiency of man. And as it's presented in John, and as we walk through, you'll see there are many, many examples. They have this idea of man's insufficiency in comparison to a righteous and holy God and Jesus in comparison to a righteous and holy Jesus. When you think about it, it's really it's a it's a way of showing God's deity by showing our inadequacy. Um, so this morning, probably a little bit less Sunday school lesson, I guess, a little bit more devotional. Um, but luckily, we will get to walk through most of the book. We'll read a, quite a number of verses as we walk through, uh, which is a good thing. Never bad to get scripture from the pulpit. Um, and I should also make it clear that, that as I read through John to put the list together, I found many more examples than I'm going to present this morning. I don't know whether I'll make it through this morning. I hope I do. But as you can also imagine, there are certain themes that pop up early in the book that are then repeated um, throughout the book, and, and there's no point in really presenting them twice, so we'll sort of have less and less examples per chapter as we go through. So let's just start in chapter 1. Uh, there's, I haven't given a lot of, I haven't given a lot of um, preaching, I guess, behind each example. So as I walk through these, I should say there was a number of times when I got to a, a, an example of the theme, the inadequacy of man, and I went, you know what, there's a really deep meaning there. And as I mentioned last week, I thought if, if, if there was a good preacher, and I don't include myself in that, but if there was a good preacher, I think most of the, most of the examples that I'm bringing here this morning, they might very well preach a very good message. Um, anyway, that's just a little aside. So let's just start in 
chapter 1. And let's start in verse 3. And I'll read the verse and then I'm just going to, as best I can, try and point out. Now, I should also be very careful here because when I say insufficiency, when I say inadequacy, I use those two terms interchangeably. But I don't want it to be uh, an, an inability. And there are certain examples in here that we look at or that I'm going to, to put forth where man has a certain amount of ability in such things, whatever, and we'll get there. It's not necessarily that man has a complete inability to do everything that I will put forward this morning, but when you compare us to Christ, we certainly have an insufficiency and an, or an inadequacy. So verse 3, chapter 1, verse 3, just walking through the book. That's so We'll just keep walking towards the end of the book. Verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. The inadequacy of man and the creation. You and I, we can't create like God. We may build, we may alter, but when it comes to creating, we fall far short of Jesus. Verse 5, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. We have an inadequacy in our ability to comprehend the light that is in Jesus Christ. Go to verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Outside of Christ, we are completely inadequate in our ability to become sons of God. No matter how good we are, no matter how highly we think of ourselves, we are just completely inadequate. Verse 17, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The inadequacy of the law to give grace and truth, that came by Christ. Go to verse 27. He it is who coming after, this is John speaking, he it is, who, John, sorry, John the Baptist speaking, he it is who coming after me is preferred before me whose shoe latch it I am not worthy to unloose. The inadequacy of man to tie Jesus' shoes. Now to mention this almost seems a little silly, but when you consider that by, Je when you consider that by Jesus' own mouth, John the Baptist was the greatest among men, and that even he wasn't worthy to tie the shoes of Jesus, this gives us an indication of where we sit outside of the deity of Christ. Go to verse 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, John the Baptist, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world, the inadequacy of man to take away the sin of the world. Again, John the Baptist speaking when he sees Jesus approaching. Now remember, if what John was doing was able to take away the sins... He would have no need to proclaim Jesus to the people. Go all the way down to verse 51, still in chapter 1. He saith unto, this is Jesus, He saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus talking to Nathanael, showing our inadequacy to see heaven opened. Move on to chapter 2. Verse 11, the beginning of, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. The inadequacy of man to turn water into wine. Verse 13 to 16, and the Jews' Passover was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold auction, oxen and sheep and doves and the changes of money sitting. And when he had made a, a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the auction, o oxen, 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 and poured out the changes' money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. The inadequacy of man to correctly interpret the law. Now remember what was going on in the temple was allowed under the law. There was allowed to be an exchange of money. If you had to come from a very long way away, instead of driving your livestock all the way to Jerusalem to offer a, a sacrifice in the temple, you were allowed to 
sell where you were, bring money and then buy in Jerusalem and offer that as a sacrifice. But it would seem that this was that the letter of the law was no longer being carried out in a manner acceptable to God. So the inadequacy of man to correctly interpret the law. We might also note that in the statement Jesus made about the temple being his father's house, that he is lay, laying claim about his future ministry. Go to verse 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. The inadequacy of man to understand Jesus' sayings. Verse 25. And needed not that any should testify of man. This is Jesus. Needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. The inadequacy of man to understand the nature of man. Verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 4. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? How can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? The inadequacy of man to understand his need to be born again. Verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not, canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. The inadequacy of man to understand the moving of the Spirit. Verse 14. And Moses, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The inadequacy of man to prevent his own perishing. Verse 19. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. The inadequacy of man to love light. Verse 27. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. The inadequacy of man to receive anything. Verse 30. He must increase, John the Baptist, he must increase, but I must decrease. The inadequacy of man's increase. Verse 34. For he whom God hath sent, speaking the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. John speaking of Jesus. This is um, talking about the Spirit being given without measure to Christ, which implies to me that we are inadequate in receiving the Spirit without measure. We can't receive the full measure of the Spirit. Verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The inadequacy of man to, to obtain everlasting life. Verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 9. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. The inadequacy of man to see our equality before God. Outside of Jesus, we all stand equal before God. Verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The inadequacy of man to give living water. Verse 16 to 18. Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast five husbands, and he whom thou hast now, or who, he whom thou now hast, is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. Uh, where am I? 17. Um, the inadequacy of man to hide the truth from Jesus. Ultimately, we are not getting away with anything. It's all going to be laid bare. 
Verse 25. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. The inadequacy of man to recognise our own Saviour. Verse 35. Say not ye, there are yet four months, this is Jesus speaking, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. The inadequacy of man to see the ripeness of the harvest. Verse 42, and saith unto the woman, now we believe, not believing of thy not because of thy saying, this is the, the crowd that, so that lady that Jesus was talking to, she's gone into town and she said, come met a man that told me all things ever I did and, um, and the townspeople have come out and they've believed and said, and they're now talking to the woman, now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him, uh, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the saviour of the world. I struggled a little bit to put this into words, but man's inadequacy to tell of the depth of the Saviour. 48. And then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The inadequacy of man to believe. Chapter 5. Go to verse 4. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. You know how I spoke about this is not necessarily a complete inability of man but an inadequacy of man. And I don't want to diminish in any way from what medical science does for us because it does great things these days. But man still has an inadequacy in healing himself. Remember, the Bible says that it was whatsoever disease that person had when they made it to that pool. And we are still inadequate um, in that sense. Go to verse 16. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Man's inadequacy to see the law, law fulfilled in Jesus. So just breaking just a little bit in the next couple of ones away from the inadequacy of man, go to verse 21. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. And this one here is about the adequacy of God, the adequacy of God to raise the dead. Go to verse 27. And hath given him... This is Jesus speaking, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, speaking of himself, because he is the Son of Man. The adequacy of Jesus to execute judgment. All right, back to man, verse 36. But I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. The inadequacy of even John to bear witness. Verse 37, uh, 47, sorry. But if ye believe not his writings, speaking of Moses and the law, but if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? The inadequacy of man to believe the Old Testament writings. Chapter 6, verse 5. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? The inadequacy of man to feed the multitude. Go to verse 15. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. Remember, I've spoken a couple of times about how when Jesus came the first time, there were many, many that desired to set him on that throne and make him a king. This, in this passage, we see man's inadequacy in understanding God's purpose. Go to 
Go to verse 19. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. Man's, the disciples in the boat, man's inadequacy to recognise Christ. Verse 25, And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Now remember, Jesus had walked over, right? And they didn't understand because the, the, the background, I'll try and give you just enough background here without wasting too much time or spending too much time. The disciples had got in a boat and they'd gone over the other side. Jesus was still on this side of the, of the, the sea. And then Jesus walked over and they couldn't understand how Jesus came to be over the other side because he hadn't got in the boat. Right, And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Man's inadequacy to recognise the power of Christ. Go to verse 41. The Jews then murmured at him, because he saith unto them, and because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Man's inadequacy to recognise where Christ came from. Verse 60. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, Jesus speaking about the bread of life and the, uh, sorry, about breaking of bread and the drinking of the, the blood. Many therefore of his disciples, when he had heard this, said, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? Man's inadequacy in interpreting Jesus' words. Chapter 7, verse 16. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Man's inadequacy in perceiving where Jesus' message came from. Verse 24. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Man's inadequacy to judge righteously. Verse 30, then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him because his hour was not yet come. Man's inadequacy to alter God's timing. Verse 42 to 53, hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh, out of, the, cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto him, Why have ye not bought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Nicodemus saith unto them, He that came to Jesus by night being one of them, Doth our law judge any man before it hear him? and know what he doeth? Then they answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. Me, uh, they answered and said unto uh, and every man went unto his own house. Man's inadequacy to correctly discern scripture. Uh, go to John chapter 8, start in verse 7. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and saith unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. And we're dealing with that woman caught in adultery. We have man's, in, uh, the, man's inadequacy to stand in judgment. Verse 14 to 16, Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, and I, but I and the Father that sent me. The inadequacy of man to understand the unity of Jesus and God. Verse 24. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he ye shall die in your sins. The inadequacy of man to recognise the consequence of not following Jesus. 
Go to verse 34. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. The inadequacy of man to recognise that we are servant to sin. Verse 45. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. The inadequacy of man to see the truth. Go to verse 9. Uh, sorry, chapter 9 and verse 4. I must work the work, Jesus speaking, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. The inadequacy of man to achieve something outside of Christ. Verse 15 to 16. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. Speaking of that blind man that Jesus had given, had, had given sight to. He saith unto him, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed, and I do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was division among them. Uh, the inadequacy of man to agree on Christ. Verse 18, But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called uh, the parents of him that had received his sight. The inadequacy of man to believe on what Jesus had done. Verse 29, We know that God spake unto Moses, As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. The inadequacy of man to reconcile Christ with Moses. Verse 30 to 34. The man answered and said unto them, Why, wherein, why herein is a marvellous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes, the blind man speaking, or the, man who, the blind man who was healed speaking. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshipper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. Then answered and they answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. The inadequacy of man to hear witness being born of Christ. Chapter 10, verse 1 to 3. Very Christ speaking, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up by some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Whoa, where was I going with that? That was a good passage of scripture, but not quite where I was um, meaning to go. Verse 4, And he... I think that's, yeah, no, sorry, that's right. The inadequacy of men to lead Jesus' sheep. Verse 18. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself, Jesus speaking. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. The inadequacy of man to take Jesus' life. Go to chapter 11. Verses 12 to 14. Then said his disciples, Lord, speaking of Lazarus, Lord, if he speak, uh, if, he sh if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death. But they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. The inadequacy of man to understand the nature of death. Verse 25, And Jesus saith unto her, speaking of Martha, I am, the, or speaking to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. The inadequacy of man to understand the nature of death in Christ. Verse 39, Jesus said, Take, away the, take ye away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he's been dead four days. The inadequacy of man to understand Jesus' power and authority. Verse 48. If we let him thus alone, uh, this is the chief priests, 
speaking of Jesus after Lazarus' resurrection, if we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and our nation. The inadequacy of man in his desire for all to come to Jesus. Go to chapter 12, verse 6. This is um, um, Judas speaking. Um, but he cared, uh, but he said, not um, speaking of that ointment being sold for 300 pence, but he said not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bare what was put therein. The inadequacy of man not to be greedy. Verse 10 and 11, but the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Pro Lazarus, he's already been dead once and Jesus raised him up and now the chief priests, because so many people are believing on him, they're mad keen to make him dead again. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. The inadequacy of man to want to see others saved. Verse 19, the Pharisees therefore said among themselves, perceive, perceive ye how ye prevail nothing. Behold, the world is gone out after him. They've gone out after Jesus. Um, where was I going there? 12, 19, the inadequacy of man to prevail over Jesus. Go to verse 37. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. The inadequacy of man to believe by seeing miracles. Verse 42. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. The inadequacy of man to confess Jesus before our peers. Go to chapter 13, verse 7. Jesus answered and said unto them, What I do not, uh, what I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. The inadequacy of man to know the future. Verse eleven, for he uh, for he knew who should betray him, therefore he said uh, therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. The inadequacy of man to recognise uncleanness in others. Go to chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The inadequacy of man to come to the Father. Verse 9. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father. The inadequacy of man to see the Father in Jesus. Verse 17. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye knoweth him, for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. The inadequacy of man to receive the Spirit. Remember, a lot of these things are outside of Jesus. So the inadequacy of man to receive that Spirit outside of Jesus. Verse 23 to 24. Jesus answered and saith unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. The inadequacy of man to keep Jesus' sayings. Go to chapter 15. Uh, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he shall give it to you. The inadequacy of man's choices. Jo Jesus chose them they didn't choose Jesus. Verse 24. 
if I, Jesus speaking again, if I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they, uh, they had not had sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my Father. The inadequacy of man to love Jesus. Go over to chapter 16, verse 2. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. The inadequacy of man to recognize correct godly service. Verse 8. And when he is come, speaking of the Spirit, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. The inadequacy of man alone to reprove of sin, righteousness and judgment. Verse 24. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. The inadequacy of man to have full joy. Go over to chapter 17, verse five, uh, 15, should I say. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, Jesus praying to his Father, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. The inadequacy of man to be kept from the evil. Remember, outside of God. Verse 24, uh, 23. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. The inadequacy of man to uh, sorry, the inadequacy of man to be made perfect. Go to ver, uh, chapter eighteen, verse eleven. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword unto the sh into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? The inadequacy of man to understand Jesus' plan. Verse 27. Peter then denied again and immediately the cock crew. The inadequacy of man to bear witness of Jesus. Go to verse 40. We're getting there. We're just not far away now. Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. The, in, uh, the inadequacy of man to pick the right accused. Verse 19, uh, chapter 19, verse 11. And Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, speaking to Pilate, except if it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. The inadequacy of man to have power. Verse 15. But they cried out, Take him uh, uh, away with him, Away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. The inadequacy of man to recognize our king. Go to chapter 20, verse 9. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. The inadequacy of man to understand the scripture. And to verse 25. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he saith unto them, this is, uh, this is Thomas speaking, Except I shall see in his hands the prints of the nails and put my finger into the, print, into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. The inadequacy of man to believe. Final chapter, verse uh, chapter 21, verse 3. Simon Peter saith unto him, I go a fishing. They saith unto him, We also go with thee. The other disciples that were there. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. The inadequacy of man to catch fish. I, listen, think about that from a scriptural, spiritual point of view. 21 to 23. Peter, saith, uh, Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Now, what's happening in this passage is that um, there's, there's at least three disciples walking with Jesus, and Jesus has just told Peter what his end's going to look like. And, uh, and Peter's 
I think got his back up a little bit, if I interpret this passage correctly, he's got his back up a little bit and he looks around and says, well, if that's going to be what happens to me where people take me where I don't want to go and I have to raise my hands up so that people can dress me, then what's going to happen to this bloke? And Jesus saith unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then when this saying went abroad among the brethren that the disciple that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? The inadequacy of man to understand Jesus' words correctly. Hopefully this hasn't been too dry. At least a little bit of a partial illustration of our inadequacy uh, outside of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Our own flesh will always be insufficient, but by salvation and the Holy Spirit's leading and guiding, we may grow and ultimately go on to perfection when this flesh is no more. Let's have a quick pray and we'll be done. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to open your word. I thank you for your scripture this morning. Please bless us and edify us by it. Pray, Lord, that you'd be glorified in it. In Jesus' name, amen.